Hey guys, I hope you can hear me. I hope, I hope, I hope that you guys can hear me. Seriously. Yay. Thank goodness. I was holding my breath, literally. <sighs> we are working with the limp, guys. Um, I, my computer is still not right. Um, I've been working on it, working on it. Apple's been working on it. And so I don't have everything set up yet. Um, OBS was working, then it wasn't working as a all of a sudden today. So uh, we're going to hope and pray that it stays up while we're live. I'm not going to go on camera because I'm all puffy faced from crying and I'm not going <laughs> to. I have been fighting this computer so much and it has upset me to that point. So <laughs> we are going to limp through this. You don't have any sound, Susan. Um, Susan needs to close and open again, I think. So, that's been what I've been doing for a week, guys, is trying to reload my computer. All of my photos, all of my documents, all of my fonts, all of my designs. You name it, I have been working on all of it. So, <laughs> today I jumped in, or yesterday decided what I was going to do, and today I jumped in and made the files. Um, but I got my inspiration from this, and I got this at Hobby Lobby. Um, they're like $2.99, but they had a 50% off sale, so I paid a buck and a half for it. And I knew we had pillow boxes, but I needed some this size anyway. So I bought a few of these, and I was like, you know, I would like some different sizes of those. So, it's okay, Pat. Uh, not anybody's fault. It's just that it was, it's just been so frustrating to try and get it all, all back. And with it being the holidays and me trying to get out files for you guys and, and do the lives on top of it, it's, it was just extremely stressful. And today, I just reached the tipping point. <laughs> so, but we're getting there. Um, I, I feel a little better now that I got off the phone with Apple today and got some of it fixed and some of it straightened out. Right, Kim, I, I do, but I didn't want to cancel another live on you guys. I really didn't, and, and that's that's what really upset me as I was afraid I was going to have to cancel. So I feel better now that I'm live and, I, and you guys are getting a project. That was my main concern. The computer can wait, but I wanted to make sure that you guys had a project. So this is what we're, I recreated. And I used a pillow box that was already in design space. And this is a little bit bigger than what the normal size is. Ah, thanks, Kim. And then I have this one. And this is max. This is the biggest we can go in design space. So if you guys want these really giant ones, you're going to have to get those at Hobby Lobby. Because this is the max I could get them with a handle on them. Now, if you don't, if you want to get the regular pillow box out of... Um, design space access and slice it in half and add yourself a tab on it um, you can make one this size but it won't have a handle so this is max with that but you can get a t-shirt in here guys i'm gonna say you could get a 2x t-shirt in here so um it's a pretty good size box and this is just basic this was just my mock-up i wrapped a ribbon around it because 
it opens from the end so you can put the ribbon around it and glue it on I put little pop dots to hold my tails down on mine so it would look pretty um, because they're not going to be taking the ribbon off so lots of stuff that we can do with these and I just tied one onto the handle here I didn't finish it because I was running out of time but I was going to put a poinsettia on this one so many things we can do but tonight I'm going to show you guys too how to make these and I know some of you probably have seen these 3D bows in Design Space. And this is Cricut cardstock, 80 pound. They're red cardstock. So we're going to make those tonight, too. I put one together, and I left the smaller one for you guys. I probably should have done the smaller one and left the bigger one so you guys could see better. But I wasn't thinking. <laughs> my, my thoughts were elsewhere. Yeah, it should, yeah, and I have, if you're doing blankets or quilts, Susan, I do have a quilt box I made, was it last year, guys, maybe the year before? It's a huge box. You can get, you can get a set of towels in it, so, uh, with the hand, the bath towel, the, uh, I call it a hair towel, a hand towel, and a washcloth, so, and still have plenty of room, and I did put a jacket in it, and, um, a, a crib quilt. So if you have those, I do have a box that will fit those and it will cut on design space. So we're going to start with this one and I just got some little decor pieces out and I made you two sizes in the file and the file is available to monthly supporters. It is up on my site. I just got it up guys and I apologize. I wanted to get it up earlier but I couldn't so it is up so you guys can cut it and both sizes are in the same file. So if you don't want the big one, you can hide it or however you want to do that. But we're going to start with the small one. And it's going to look like this. You're just going to fold it on that center score line there. Bone folder. And give it a press. And then, for me, it's easier to do these curved because they can be tricky and I did cut this out of basil uh, 110 but you can use the Cricut cardstock it'll be strong enough for craft stock see I'm getting a little tear there because these are a little difficult to bend when it's this heavy but I couldn't find my Cricut white and I was out of time so you're just I find it easier just to do these curved ones before I glue it together just to give it a little bit of a the breakdown is already going on so I'm just going to tell you guys make sure you don't go over craft weight or 80 weight on these and I'm just taking my fingernail and going along that curve and helping it break down some so I don't tear it just to get that curve and then I'm doing the same thing here I'm just going to get it started with my nail just breaking it down following the score line because I used the box from one access design space and I used the and it had cut lines on it and I had already set it up before I realized and was test cutting it before I realized that there's were cut lines in there and it was just like dashes I had changed them to score but they were still just dashing so I went in and got the scores off of another pillow box out of there and that's what I used. So once you've broken it down and you've got that ready, then you're just going to flatten it back out. And that's going to help you later. And there are two score lines on there and you can go ahead and fold those now so you know where your glue goes if you want to. It doesn't really matter. And then we're just going to toss in our glue, staying above the score line, and go around your handles. And then just flatten it out. I'm just going to glue that out really good. And let's see. So now we've got that done. I'm just giving it a second to dry. I was looking at comments, making sure I, nobody, if you have any design space questions, guys, you can ask those now. You can hold them to the end. 
the mods will help you while I'm doing the project. But we're going to go over the, doing that bow there as well. And then we're going to make sure you glue it good. I don't have it glued right there in the corner, but I can touch it up. But we're going to do welcome signs too. And you're just going to push it in just like you would your other pillow box and then pull this end over. And you can hear it crack that card stuck. And you're going to get that separation if you don't have it glued good, but I'm just kind of rushing through this because they do meet. You can see they do well. You have to remember I'm doing the heavy card stock, so mine's going to give me a little bit of a problem. Or it's going to try to. I'm not going to let it. That one's better. I got glue down here on this corner. Yay! And then... I also cut you guys some tags to hang on there. I got the big one and the small one here. And some end pieces. And I know I got, there it is. I had a blade issue too, it looks like. There we go. So, and these are optional. I wanted to do these in print and cut, but I didn't. And I'm not going to go through and do all of these. We'll do it on the big box. But you're just going to glue the solid one in there. And then you're going to glue this guy on here. Just like that. And that's if you want the finished ends. Um, like I said, I wanted to do print and cut. but And that's why I'm not going to glue mine on because I do want to change them. But I just wanted to show you guys. That's where those pieces go. And then the tag piece, you have the piece with the hole in it, and then you have your little decorative piece. And this is the piece I'm going to stamp. The stamp. We're just going to glue that on there and try to get it center April, at least a little bit. So then we have that. And then we have our wreath that goes on the front. There it is. Just like so. So you're going to glue that down. And you can change that out in the file too, guys. Make it whatever holiday or season or, or whatever it is that you want. But make sure if you're using this one, all your little leaves are tacked down so they're not being pulled off the box. I did leave it in the file. There's another brown piece that you can cut. I didn't cut it. I didn't want it on mine. If you want it, it is in the file. All you have to do is unhide it. I did not take it out of the file. And then we have our little berries piece. And then we're going to put that down. And then everywhere where this is white, guys, I am going to take some Nuvo drops and either gold or red, I haven't decided yet. And I am going to put them where all these little white holes are or on top of all my berries. Just to dress it up a little bit. And then this is going to tie with your tag and then you'll tie it on your handle. Okay? Now the big one goes together just a little bit different. Okay? And that's why I wanted to, and we'll put the pieces on this one. Just going to set those to the side. So you have two that look like this. And again, you're going to want to pre-fold that curved line. Before you do anything, go ahead and curve that and get that breaking down just a little bit right there in that curve. helps me just to use my nail to go in there. Pillow boxes can always be a little bit of a pain. But they're pretty and they're cute. There we go. So we have that and I'm just going to flatten it back out. And you have a tab here on the bottom of this one. And you're just going to fold that. And I am going to score that. I'm not going to score my curved line because it will just make a mess of it. 
can see where I've been rubbing this cardstock all over my table. I'm just going to fold my handle. Then I'm, you've got one that doesn't have a tab, okay? You're still going to fold your curve piece. Yep, that's where you... Your script is freezing up, Sharon. To print? Do you think it may be your printer cache? My cardstock didn't cut. I got a fuzzy here. I'm just clipping that off. And I do have a video on it too, Jamie, if they need it. I'm doing the firmware on the Easy Press. So I folded those. Now I'm going to fold that little handle back just a little bit, just to give me a crease. And we're going to glue this bottom piece first. So I'm going to make sure I get my edges really good. Inside it, and then we're just going to place those together. Line them up at the bottom and the sides, and just press it down. And that should leave you with the bigger piece that looks like the smaller one we did. And then you're just going to do the handle again on that one. I'm going to get my handle good on this one, in those corners. Only printing, Sharon? I don't know, that sounds more like a printer cash issue to me, Sharon. If everything else is fine, Jamie might know of a fix for that. So we're just going to let that dry a little bit. I'm just going to go ahead and put my wreath on there. And this is Cricut cardstock, guys. Like I said, I just couldn't find my white Cricut paper. I don't know why. <laughs> it is eluding me in my craft room. Stand up so I get that centered. Oh, that's not even close. Oh, well, I am getting glue everywhere because I can't get it centered. And then again, your berry piece. The bigger one seems to be easier to do because the pieces are bigger, of course. Just going to 
place uh, pieces on here. And I think it does matter. I have to look at my score lines, which way they go, guys. And it's not me. That's because of the way the original pillow box was made. So just check your pieces before you put them on. Of course, you can always trim off that edge if you have to. something. My lights are not on. Much better. Now I can see. There we go. Can I measure and see how big that one is? I will, Kim. I will measure that one. off a little bit. I'll trim it off on that front edge. And I may have gotten them mixed up too because I forgot to check it. Okay. So now we have our ends on. Just gonna pop that over, and then I'm gonna pop that one over. I got a piece of red. See, uh, mine didn't line up good, so I'm gonna have to trim that off. So if that happens to you guys, just go in and trim it neatly. I'm just showing you guys. I'm not being very neat with it, but you guys can be neater with yours. If you put them on backwards like I did. Again, they I would prefer them to be a little bit smaller. I'll clean that up with my true control. However, I had to make it line up to what was already in progress because I didn't make the, five, the original pillow box. I just did, I'm going to go ahead and trim that one. Um, I just did the, I just used their file and created a little bit of a panel for it. I'm not too sure that I would even use these. Might even just leave those off. This side's fine. So there we have the pillow box. And I dropped my bread. You're going to need a bread. Oh, there it is. To do the bow. And again, you, this tag is just going to glue on like we did the small one. Okay. I made it bigger. If you want to make it smaller, of course, that's up to you. With the... You've got four pieces with your bow, okay? And if you're cutting both boxes, the three big ones go, and then the three small ones, and they'll all be the same width. So you can tell them apart. So if you cut both boxes, don't worry. You're going to be able to tell. You're going to be able to tell which bow is which, because these arms need to be the same width, and the bigger one does come out bigger, okay? So you've got three pieces. And you're going to start with your largest one. Okay? Then you're going to take your bread 
and you're going to put it in. Let's see, I want them to. Okay, this is my textured side of my cardstock, my Cricut, which is what I want to the outside. So my brad needs to go in that way. Okay, and if your brad is loose, you're just going to have to hang on to it, guys. Don't let it go. And you're going to take these and you're going to loop them and flip them around. I don't know if you guys can see that. So that you're getting that point. Like a, um, like you're doing awareness ribbons. Okay? And you're just going to flip it around and put it over that brad. They all have a hole on each side on all four legs. And again, you're going to pull it over and then you're going to flip that edge right over onto your making that point. And don't worry about it lining up or any of that. You can still adjust these little legs and arms later in, in the next couple of steps. Again, fold it over and twist it. Bring it over. If you're not getting that point, then you're not twisting it. Because you don't want to just go over, fold it flat over because that's what you're going to get. Okay? Let me get a little closer on this last one. You're going to fold it over and twist it and place it over the bread. And it should look just like that. Now these, this is a large bread. The larger bow kept popping off of that, but that one should stay. You're going to get your next largest one. We're using the graduated side and we're going up. And you're just going to put your legs in between each one of those right over the bread. Okay? And you're going to repeat and do the same thing. And bring those in. These are a lot of fun. They're really cute, easy to make, especially if you don't have any ribbon. You can use any color pattern cardstock. Now they do have a double layer, and I don't double layer mine. I like the solid color ones, but you can most certainly put that center layer over it. If you do, I would use 65 pound or paper weight. I would not go with the um, cardstock. And then the third one, we're going to go right back in in between those four of the last layer, okay? And it's going to be a little tight. It's going to be a little stiff. Don't worry about it. Flip it around. And, oops, I don't think my hole cut in that one all the way. Get my pokey tool. There it is. I'm just going to flip it around too. Oops. It helps sometimes to curl it. Just be careful you don't want to tear it in here on the inside where they meet that center. Let's take my finger and coax it in place. And we're same motion, same as we did the first two layers. You're doing the same thing with the third. It's a little tight. He wants to not curve. There you go. Get in there. And it doesn't matter if the bottom of that cardstock bends. You're not going to see it. Just push it in there with your finger. Your pokey tools. Whatever you need to make that go the way you want it. There you go. All right, so now we've got all of those on there. Again, if your bread's not holding your cardstock, don't let it go. And then you've got your centerpiece. And you're going to place it, here's my textured side here. So textured side is down over the bread, and then I'm just gonna loop this piece over the bread for the second hole. If I can get it on there, please go on there. There we 
go. Kind of hard to see. And then you're just going to open up the legs of that brad. And then you have your little bow. And that's for the small one, guys. And then I did the big one the same way. So you can decide if you want to do a bow, a tag, do your bow in a different color. And I think I'm just going to go with the bow itself. And you can flatten it out a little bit. I'm going to use some foam tape. Probably a couple of pieces because it does pull it in. Stuck to me. Gonna double stack those. And I'm gonna do two more right here. And I'm just gonna put it right there on that curve. And it's going to curve right in there and it's going to sit. How cute is that? I'm loving it. Isn't it pretty? Scratching my cardstock up. So, and then let's just see what it looks like with a tag because you may want to opt to not cut the tag and write their name on the handle or on the back. Totally up to you. Or go with a smaller tag. Just in case. Just going to use the white ribbon here because it's already opened. Just going to punch it through there and loop it. Knotting that in. Trim it up. And then you can loop that through. Watch me loop it the wrong way. What do you want to? What do you know? What do you know? I didn't. Hey. So you have your tag. You have the tag to the back. Oh, that's cute. So you can do your tag to the front or the back. Sometimes less is more. may want to eliminate the tag. But I just wanted you guys to see everything that I put in the file so you could decide what you wanted to cut, what you didn't want to cut. Things like that. A three inch acrylic ornament? I'm pretty sure that it would. Um, finished. It is about four inches from this seam to this seam. So I'm thinking that it would because it's it's an inch and a half. Let me look straight down on it and get a good measurement. Yeah, inch and a half deep. So a disc might fit in that. The three inch disc would probably fit in that perfectly. But I do have, if you've got the three inch disc ornament, um, Susan, I do have a box that's like my four inch disc, but it's made for the three. If you if you look in um, look up my ornament box, the one with the superheroes on it, in the description of that video is one for the two it's actually a two point six five inch disc ornament. But I think they call it a three inch. And I actually, I put these to the back, and I actually glued my wreath on the wrong side of that one. That's what's wrong with that one. I thought it looked odd. Your curls go to the back, so make sure you put your wreath on the right side. So I'm just having one of those days, guys, and you're getting to have one of those days with me. <laughs> All right, Kim wanted to know the size of this box. Um... 
let me give you the measurement with it open because if you're re replicating it, Kim, you're going to need to know the open measurement of it. So, let me get over here to the one inch mark. It is 16 inches across. 16 inches. And it is to the top 10 and a half. So it's 16 width, 10 and a half height on this giant. So if you wanted to take the handle off, then you might be able to get it in there. Um, at 16 and 8 and 3 eighths. Yeah, 3 eighths. So, yeah, it, it's, it's pretty big. But you, if you take the handle off, then you'll be able to get it on, um, on 24 inch paper. You could do it or poster board. So you could you you could leave the handle on if you have that because it's within the eleven and a half inch this way. It's this length, and you will have to cut it in two pieces. This is one singular piece. There's no seam. So it's made like the small one with no seam at the bottom. The bigger ones have a seam. Okay, so now we've covered the boxes. And since this one is made right, I'm just going to put these on there so they dry. And then we're going to move on to doing the welcome signs. Or any sign. It doesn't have to be just the welcome sign. I just want these to have time to dry. Maybe they'll dry while we're doing that welcome sign. And I can show you what the finished looks like and these are nouveau drops guys you can get those scrapbook.com Amazon I have links below Blitzy um, and this one happens to be holiday cheer that I used I just didn't want to add another uh, another color in there so let's move over and take a look at design space Let's see. Yay, there we go. It should be popping up for you guys. Yes, Susan, you would use your 12 by 24 inch mat if you're doing the, if you're making your own template to make that one the size of that Hobby Lobby. Like I said, the file that I did for you guys has the small one right here. And I'll just go ahead and group that and save it. And then the large one, this is all the pieces for the large one. And I'm just going to save. So you have everything in there and take out the pieces you don't want. And I'm just going to say, go ahead and make these panels just a little bit smaller. Just shrink them down just a little bit and that way you won't have to clip them. They may not give you the perfect edge if you shrink them down just a little bit, but I think it's better smaller than larger. And maybe you can go in there and get it the perfect curvature. I couldn't get it. I got it as close as I could get it for the time I had. So let's go to a new project. I did save. Oh, I moved something. Okay. And we have a lot of people doing the welcome signs. And of course, we're not going to do a sign because I couldn't get it to fit in the camera, of course. Um, so this is how I do it. There are tons of ways to do it. And I always say there's more than one way to do anything. Um, so there may be things that you find along the way when you're doing them that help you because everybody learns differently. And there may be things that help you that necessarily would be extra steps for somebody more versed in making signs. So the first thing that I do if I'm going to be making my sign is I measure my board. And what I'm going to do here, let's 
let me tilt up so I can see, guys. I have to reset everything. Um, I go in and get myself a square. Yeah, the breads are at Michael's. You can get them at your office supply, too, guys. They have the small, the mini ones, the big ones. They have all sorts of sizes at Michael's. But you're going to start with your sign, and you're going to start with a square. And let's just say, I'm just going off of what most people say. They're using a six-foot board, which is going to be 72 inches. Okay? So, and we know we can't cut 72 inches. All right? We, we know this, but we can design with 72 inches. So I'm going to go in, and I'm going to unlock this, and I'm going to make my height 72 okay and then i am going to let's i think most of them are doing what a six or an eight inch board wide i'm going to say eight inch if i was doing one i would probably use an eight inch board and have uh, home depot cut it for me to a six foot so we're just going to make that eight inches wide so now we're going to lock that back and we know that this is the size of our sign lifelike real size we can't see it all, but if we minimize it down, then we can get a good idea. We can get a general idea of what we've got. But just for, just for this video, I am going to go ahead and make this a little bit shorter, so, but I just want you guys to get the gist of what's going on. So I'm going to make this, I'm just going to say a five foot board at 60, just so that we can get more of it into the screen. So you see it there, it's at 60 inches. The next thing you need to decide is, are you going to wrap cord around it? Are you going to put any kind of floral or flourishes at the top of it? Um, anything like that. You need to make sure that you, you account for that. Or your letters are not going to fit. Or you're going to cover them up. So if you're going to get twine, and I just say, go in and get yourself a shape. And let's say that you're going to do a 3-inch ribbon. I'll just leave that at 3.11. A three inch ribbon of twine or rope or whatever it is around the top of your board with some kind of a bow at the top of that. So you're going to get that pretty close to the edge, maybe a couple of inches down. You know, it's not going to go all the way to the end. And I'm going to unlock it. I'm just going to stretch it so that we know that this is our, our decor space. Okay, that's what I call it, my decor space. I don't want to get into that space. So I made it a little bit wider, and I'm going to come down here to the bottom, and I'm going to do the same thing. And I've got that like one inch from the bottom. I think I got the other one two inches. Eh, let's just do two to make it even. And you can see I've got two squares up there. And then I'm going to make sure I've got two here. And then I'm just going to select all. And I am going to align center horizontally. And I know this is going to look weird to you guys, but just go with me on it. And we're going to weld. And you see the, we don't want our letters going outside these tabs. Our letters should not be outside those tabs whatsoever. So now let's go and let's get our font. So let's get text. And I am going to put the word welcome in here. But I'm not going to type it out vertically. Yeah, I mean, you could do it either way that you want. Um, but I'm just going to type out the word welcome. And then I am going to choose my font. And guys, bear with me because I don't know what all of my fonts look like. I don't have all of my fonts loaded yet. So I may not have everything. Um, let's just go with somebody... Somebody got a, let's just go with this one. It looks good. It'll work. So now I am going to stretch those out. And I am going to go to advanced. And I'm going to ungroup to letters. I want them all separate. Okay. And I am going to make sure. Well, actually, oops, I missed a step. Do as I do, not as, do as I say, not as I do. There we go. 
I'm going to bring this over. I want to look at it on my board. So I'm going to stretch it until my W, my O is probably my largest or widest letter. I'm just going to check them. Don't go by your E's and L's or I's. You want to go by your wide letters. And I think the C and the O are the widest. So they fit, and I've got a comfortable margin on each side of my board. Okay? That's a couple of inches on each side. Now, if you don't want it, if you want more space, you're going to have to go smaller. Then we're just going to advance and group to letters. And now we have to space these out to fit on our sign. I'm not worried about how much space is between them yet. That will, that will be a different thing. So we're just going to keep bringing these down and remember now I made my board 12 inches shorter and this is why they're a six foot so let me just unlock that and change it back to 72 inches because we need that space it's not going to fit if we don't and it's no longer eight inches wide because we have those tabs but this is still eight one two three four five six seven yep still eight inches up here because I unlocked it didn't skew. So now I have my first letter and I'm going to say I want it. I'm just going to pull my board up here till I have one square and I'm going to start that W one inch below this right here. Okay? Don't worry about the rest of them. Come down here. Oops, I moved my board. Let me hit undo. Get that E and we want that E and I've got just a smidge of space right there, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'm going to give myself that one inch square there. So my E is sitting there. I am While that E is selected, I'm going to hold my shift key. And I'm, well, first I'm going to move my board out of the way. That's what I'm going to do. Then I'm just going to get my E all the way up to the top. Should have them all. Hold my shift and grab my W with it. I am going to align. We're going to center horizontally. That's going to make sure that our E and our L are in the center of our wide letters. And yours may not look so weird. Your E's may be wider. Your L's may be wider. It's just this font. So yours may be just as wide as the rest of them. Maybe a fixed width. This is not a fixed width font. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to go align and you're going to distribute vertically. And it's going to put the correct amount of space between each one of your letters. Okay? The correct amount of space between each one of your letters. And then you're going to just, I'm just going to group it for now so I don't move anything. I don't want to move. That way if I move it, they all move. I'm not moving anything. The next thing I want to do is get a star, or you can get a couple of them. And you want to make those small. I'm not going to make those real small here because you won't be able to see them, but you, they only have to be about an inch. I'll just go ahead and do it, just so you guys will know. So make your star about an inch, inch and a quarter, because you're going to have lost space on these letters anyway, okay? It's going to be lost anyway when you cut because your W's way up here and it's going to get kind of funky down here with your C. So I'm going to start with my widest letter and I'm going to duplicate that star and I'm going to bring it over. Doesn't really matter too much where I'm putting it at this point. I'm just going to select both stars now and I am going to align top and I am going to weld and now I am going to duplicate that for every letter a couple of times. So you're going to need quite a few sets. Okay? I'm going to bring another one down here at the bottom of the C. And I'm going to align them center horizontally. And I am going to weld. So now I have the top of my C and the bottom of my C, I have registration marks for them. Okay, now you're, here comes the tricky part. 
you're going to actually you don't even have you can just leave out one set right there that's not welded did I weld those nope those are welded you really only need these sets here you really don't need the board anymore you can get rid of it it was just to get your there we go I don't want to put I don't want to weld those four together yet and I'll tell you why get rid of that we're going to need some on top of that and on top of this one to go for the L and you're going to need to set here on top of the L and we have to align all these this is mainly alignment okay so make sure you got top and bottom for each set until you get to the top and the bottom so there's one for the E I only need one up here for the W need one here and one here and then we're going to need one more so for the word welcome it's going to depend on the length of your word you need one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven you need 12 sets of stars probably more than that but so what we're going to do is take the one for the e and the one for the w and we're going to align those two sets of stars i don't I want to arrange and move that to the back. I don't want to keep getting that. There we go. Two stars. Now we're going to align center. And you can put it just below your W or your E. You may have enough space, but you want to make sure that you have two sets of stars. Now I'm going to take that top set with the W, oops, that's one I, I gotta ungroup. This is where you ungroup. Do not move your letters. Whatever you do, do not move your letters. Get your top set of stars and your W and weld. Okay, now you can move that out of the way. Then you wanna get your top set and your E and weld. Then you want to get this next set that's on this E and the ones for your L and you want to align those. So just those, you want to align and center. And then you're going to get that top set and weld that to the E as well. And then you can move that. Don't move these stars here. This is an extra set. You got these, you got some wasted space up there with the L. Sometimes you can avoid it, sometimes you can't, and you're going to weld. And then we're going to need another set. I'm going to move those out. I think I got extra sets of stars. This is at the bottom. I'm going to bring over that set for the C, and you can divide the difference or whatever you want at this point. We're just going to get those two letter. Get the top set and weld it to the next letter. And then you're going to continue doing that until all of your letters, see I don't have that on the C. So I've got to duplicate, take the ones from my O. We got to line those up. Doesn't matter if we want to split the difference. But you have to align and center those. And then you don't want to move it or move your letter until you've got them. Oops, I hit caps on that top set and you're going to weld those and without moving it that's the key don't move what you've aligned and attach it to the or weld it to your next letter and you're going to continue on once you've done that then you're going to cut these now you can see that my letters are 7882 this one is going to be 8.2 but i know that all my letters are the right height we just have some extra space in there because of our spacing doesn't matter. Some of them are going to be taller. As long as they'll fit on your 12 inch, you're good to go. Once they're all cut, you're going to determine, put your uh, 
Go ahead and put your decor on if you want to and how far from the bottom, but you need to have it. I did one there, and you can even do a center star up here at the top of this one if you want to, to give you a center reference. And line it up on the board. Once you have that W down, you're good to go. You are perfectly good to go. Once you get that first W down, you're done. You're ready to go. So then you're going to come in here with that E, and guess what you're going to do? You're not going to worry about the E. We don't care about the E. And the reason we're using stars is it has five points of reference. Your stars need to line up perfectly with that E on top of that W. The stars from the W. And once they line up perfectly, then you can pull out your uh, stencil material backing, the backing off your vinyl if you're using vinyl. You can pull it off and that E is going to be in place. Then you're going to come in here with the L and you're going to not worry about the L. We're lining up the stars because we welded those together and we cut that like it was supposed to be and we know that they line up. Let me make this a little bit bigger so that you guys can see. If those stars are not lining up, they're not centered. And if they are skewed whatsoever, your stars look like this. That means that you've got your E twisted. And that's what the five points of reference help you do. Okay? Is that making sense for you guys? That's why we use a star for registration, because it gives us those. If we use a circle, you can't tell if you've got that E on there wrong. Because a circle, when you go to line those up, oops, they're up here. When you go to line those up, if it's twisted, how do you know? You don't know. You can do it with the square leveled out where it's supposed to be, and our stars line up perfectly, then our letters line up perfectly. And you're just going to continue doing that with all of your letters, whatever your word is. doesn't matter what your word is. They will all line up if you do them like that. But you have to have those top stars welded and those bottom stars welded onto each one of your letters because that's where your point of reference has come in. So any questions? Did you guys understand what, we're, what we were doing there? I know I kept getting my stars confused. It's been a while since I've done them. <laughs> But it never hurts. You can have extras of these. You can delete what you don't use. But you want to make sure that your first two are the accompany your widest letter. Because if you do them for the E and they're too close, then when you come up here, your stars are going to be on top of part of your letter and you don't want that. Then once you've got your sign all done, all you're going to do is go and pick off all your stars. You'll be finished. And if you're doing this paint, you just don't paint the stars. Don't paint them. Just paint your letters. I know there's a little bit of a delay, so I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes. If you have any questions or need me to cover any part of that again, anything that you didn't get. And of course, you can if you can if you're using 24 inch mat, you can get more than one letter on a on a mat. So they'll cut something like that, and that'll be okay as long as you've got all your points of reference. If you want to take it a step further, and this is what's easier for me, especially if you're doing a stencil. You are, if you're just doing vinyl, you can probably skip this step, but it makes weeding easier, is go in and get your square, and he's up here. Make your square fit your letter and your stars. Arrange, send it to the back, and I'll do this in, let me make these white so you guys can see it. You've got that on there, and you're going to attach. Let me make that. So when you attach, 
your stars are on there, everything, and then you can just weed out this. If you're doing a stencil, you'll weed out your stars and your letter, and if you're doing vinyl, you'll weed out the box. Yeah, it, it, it's so worth it, Jamie, because it it's very frustrating when you do Because I did one, my restroom sign, I think you guys remember back in, I think it was August, I did the restroom sign, and I didn't use any registration marks. And guess what? It was crooked. I didn't have time to fix it, and it was a temporary sign, but still, I was only going to use it for one day. It wasn't a big deal, but if I was going to be using it all the time or selling it, Yes, I would use my registration marks because that's the only way that you're going to ensure that you get them perfectly straight. And like I said, it doesn't hurt. Insert that extra star on your W. Put it right up here at the top. You're, yes, you're going to use a couple inches of vinyl, but in the long grand scheme of things, guys, vinyl is really very inexpensive. A 12 by 12 sheet's 40, 50 cents. There's 144 square inches. It's less than a penny an inch. So, you know, taking that little bit of extra vinyl and wasting just a little bit of extra vinyl to get that other star in there is nothing because you're going to make sure that your sign looks more professional and it's completely straight and aligned and everything lines up perfectly. So go ahead and waste that extra penny of vinyl. It's just a few cents more and, and you've got, you're, you haven't wasted any because this is the way I look at it. I can use those registration marks and use up a little bit more vinyl or I can keep peeling that letter off and having to redo it because I didn't get it straight and waste a lot of vinyl. So that's why I do, do mine this way. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate all of you guys joining me. I thank you so much for my moderators and cutting and taking all of my slack um, this last week while I've been dealing with my computer. Thank you for my supporters for understanding. <laughs> I do apologize that it's taking so long, but it will get better. The extra step is less headaches, Pat, absolutely. And think about it this way. If you're doing a bunch of these, you only have to line all this and set it all up once. And it really doesn't take that long. Once you get, get going, you are you can zoom right through it. The longest part is taking and picking the font, or it is for me anyway, picking which font that I want. So I appreciate all of you guys joining me. Bear with me. I will get that stocking out. I may have to do a recorded video on that, guys. Um, I will get that to you. And we are going to start slamming out some Christmas files here in the next uh, couple weeks so that you guys have enough to keep you busy all the way until the first of the year. So um, let's see. The next live is going to be... Friday, which is close to my heart night. I think I'm going to do some uh, treat boxes because we use a lot of those during the holidays. And I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe.